Hello and welcome to the Horizontal Cutoff Saw. We will be discussing this machine's mechanics and how to properly saw material. The Horizontal Cutoff Saw or Horizontal Band Saw is used to rough cut material down to more manageable sizes. Before we get started, let's point out some important features on this machine. In this picture, you can see the vise, which is used to securely hold down material while sawing. The feed control, which is used to control how fast the head of the machine descends into your material. The control panel, which is equipped with the start button, e-stop, and coolant switch. And the speed control, which is used to adjust the saw blade speed measured in feet per minute. We will talk about these specific functions when demonstrating a cut later in this video. First, we must discuss materials or raw stock. Material is normally delivered in 6 to 12 foot lengths and is supplied in common fractional sizes for the width and thickness. We will almost always start our machining projects off by cutting a piece off of round or bar stock. Before we cut anything, let's review the print. For this example, notice the part's overall dimensions. As you can see, our material is 3.5 by 2.9 by 0.7 inches thick. The material is 6061T651 aluminum. 6061 is a very common grade of extruded aluminum and is widely used in many different industries. We must know our overall size and the material of our part so we can select the appropriate piece of bar stock. This material is 6061 aluminum and it's 3 inches wide by 1 inches thick. We've chosen this material because its overall dimensions in width and thickness are oversized of our part. The extra material will be machined down to the final part size. With that said, when we cut the stock to length, we also need to leave extra material lengthwise to machine down. In order to get an accurate cut, we need to draw a line on the part using a tape measure and a square and a permanent marker. Now that I have my line drawn, I can load my bar stock and begin the cut. Before I load my part, I'm going to need to open the jaws and lift the head of the machine. The jaws are open and closed using the handle in the back. Large adjustments can be made by lifting the arm out of the slotted grooves and moved left or right or in and out. It is important that you are unscrewing the clamp back before you make a large adjustment so that you have enough travel in the handle to clamp down onto your part. The head of the machine is lifted using a pneumatic button. The head descends by adjusting hydraulic feed control. Keep in mind, if the hydraulic feed control is open, the head will automatically start descending once you release the lift button. You must close the feed control in order to prevent the head from descending. Once you have the head raised, you can now put your bar stock in position. Loosely clamp your bar stock in place so that you can keep your part square while making adjustments. Long stock that overhangs the vise must be supported. Use the roller stands to support long pieces of stock when clamping them in the vise. Lower the head and stop the blade just over the top of your part so you can see exactly where you are cutting. You can start and stop the feed by using the feed control handle. Make your final adjustment and clamp your part in the vise. Make sure your part is securely held in the vise. In the event something goes wrong, you can always hit the e-stop button. Remember the location of this button. Next, it's time to adjust the blade guides if necessary. You want to maintain the most amount of rigidity in the blade as possible while also having enough clearance to cut through your material. When you're ready to cut, start the machine and make any necessary speed adjustments. The speed of the blade is determined by the material you are cutting. Consult a chart on the machine to set the correct speed for your material. We are cutting aluminum one inch thick. This chart says this machine blade speed should be set to 275 feet per minute. Be sure you are running the correct speed before sawing. Check to make sure that the coolant is running also. You want coolant for 99% of all sawing operations. This is the coolant control switch. Once the correct speed is set, you can begin to feed the blade into the material, making sure the coolant is on. Always feed it into the material slowly and in a controlled fashion. We adjust the feed control by turning this dial. Turn this knob slowly. Wait for the machine to descend slowly into your part. The switch below the feed rate knob should be set to feed. If the saw is not descending, verify this switch is not set to hold. Keep your eyes on the cutting operation and stay with the machine while it's in operation. The saw will stop itself when the part is fully cut. Do not grab the part until the saw has completely stopped. 
If the saw does not stop over a long period of time, then you can hit the emergency stop and retrieve your part. This cutting operation is relatively simple, but there are many ways to make mistakes. Here are some common mistakes when using this machine. Not clamping your part in the vise. Not having the vise hold on to enough material while sawing. If you do need to clamp a small piece, make sure you use a spacer of equal width at the back side of the vise jaws. This will prevent the jaws from pivoting, ensuring full clamping strength is applied to your part. Not properly holding a unique shape such as L brackets. not adjusting the blade speed to the correct material, or feeding into the material too quickly. All these mistakes can lead to damage to the machine and or operator injury. If you are ever unsure of how to use or operate this machine or have questions about a specific cutting technique, please ask before using this machine. Remember, this is a community shop. Do not assume the saw is exactly how you left it once you walk away. Always check blade speed and feed rate settings before cutting. When using any machine, if you observe something broken, non-functioning, or just odd, do not use it. Please let a staff member know if you see something wrong. When you are done cutting, make sure to clean up the mess using a brush and dustpan. Metal chips and only metal chips should be disposed of in these blue barrels. Don't forget to return all tooling and supplies to their proper location. If you have questions about the operation of this piece of equipment, just ask. Staff and student workers are always here to help you.